Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR to the second hour of Focal Point on AFR Talk. Remember all of the dust that was in the air over the YouTube video? Supposed to be a trailer for a movie which does not even exist as far as I know. It's just a 13-minute trailer. And it tells the truth about Muhammad. Everything in that thing is the truth about uh, Muhammad. Uh, The age of his wife, Aisha, he betrothed her at six. He engaged in marital intimacy with her at age nine. That's why pedophilia is always going to be okay wherever Islam is ascendant. Wherever Sharia law is in place, uh, pedophilia is going to be okay because Muhammad, the founder of Islam, was a pedophile. So it's going to be okay. You've got Iranian clerics now. Uh, arguing that children 9 and 10, girls 9 and 10, ought to be able to get married. There's a movement in Egypt to get that done under the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. That's why we say, I always say, Islam and America are not compatible concepts. Islam is fundamentally anti-American. It is fundamentally un-American. None of the liberties and rights that we cherish in the West because of the influence of Christianity are found in Islam and in cultures where Sharia law is supreme. You don't have freedom of religion. You don't have freedom of conscience. You don't have freedom of speech. You don't have freedom of the press. You don't have freedom of association. None of those things are present. You, you, women are treated as chattel, as second-class citizens, and as property to be used uh, and uh, abused. And so it's been interesting to see because on November 4, two days before the election, the National Geographic Channel is going to air a movie that dramatizes the killing of Osama bin Laden. This is before the election. Remember, there's this Hollywood feature that's coming out. They said, no, if you run that before the election, it's designed to make Obama look like this conquering hero. That's just too blatantly political. We're going to delay it until after the election. This one is going to air two days before the election, and it is produced by uh, Harvey Weinstein, who is a prominent fundraiser for the Obama re-election campaign. And Harvey Weinstein has been one of the guys out there saying what a marvelous display of Obama's leadership taking out Osama bin Laden is. But wait a minute. We saw the entire Middle East aflame, according to President Obama, because somebody put out an anti-Muslim movie. It was disgraceful. It was reprehensible. It was disgusting. It's uh, beneath contempt for an American to produce a production like that. Now, here is an anti-Islam movie, an anti-Muslim movie. Here's a movie that celebrates the death of a man that most of the Islamic world idolizes. Osama bin Laden is a hero in the vast majority of the Islamic world. And here is one of Obama's big-time supporters going to show a movie two days before the election That's profoundly anti-Islam because it features, it makes Obama a hero for pulling the trigger, taking out a Islamic hero. Now, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, the word is out. People know it's coming. This is on Fox News, so the Muslims know now that this movie's coming out. And it'll be interesting to see if there's any sort of reaction in the Islamic world. And if there is, is President Obama going to come out and denounce this movie? Now, remember what happened to the guy that made the YouTube video? He, he's in jail. He's in jail right now. Judge denied him bail. He's in jail with no bail. Feel a rap coming on there. He's in jail. The judges denied him bail for making this anti-Muslim movie. So he's been essentially arrested on blasphemy charges as if we were living in a Sharia-controlled country. He blasphemed Muhammad. He's got to go to jail. That's where he is right now. No bail. Now, what's going to happen? Is President Obama going to denounce this movie as something that's reprehensible and disgusting and isn't consistent with American values? Is, he's going to, is he going to see to it that Harvey Weinstein goes to jail and is denied bail for producing such a virulent, inflammatory, incendiary movie? Inquiring minds do, in fact, want to know. Let's go back to the phones, 888 Let's go to Mike in Ina, Illinois. Mike, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Hey, Brian. How you doing today? Doing good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. I was calling in reference to uh, your wisdom that you gave to Scott yeah. on looking for a church. Yes, sir. Um, I agree with you on almost everything you say, not 100%, but most of the things that you say. And I want to tell you, Brian, that other than you just 
presenting the gospel on the radio. I believe that is the greatest thing that I have ever heard from you or maybe any of the AFR guys uh, to go to look for expository preaching, to have your children in church with you. That is exactly my stand. I agree with you 100 percent. And um, I, I just want to call and I heard you say that, and I just want to call and just encourage you and say that I totally agree with that. And um, just keep up the good work. All Thanks right, Mike. Well, listen, thank you very much. I appreciate that a lot. And I do think, you know, we've got to recapture this culture. And one of the ways we do, we have to grow our kids up in the faith. And we have to teach our young boys that the most masculine thing you can do and be is to become a follower of Jesus Christ. That's where courage, strength, boldness come from. Jesus Christ was a guy that was willing to die for his convictions. He had that kind of boldness. He had that kind of conviction. If we follow him, then we will be men of the same caliber. Same caliber. We will be willing to lay down our lives as he did in order to stand for our convictions and stand for the truth. All right, Mike, thanks. I appreciate that. Let's go to Frank in Bath County, Kentucky. Frank, you're on Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? We stand for the truth. All right, Mike, thanks. I appreciate that. Let's go to Frank. And- Frank, let's have you turn your radio down and so we can hear what you have to say. Yeah, Brian, uh, how, yes, do, how you doing? I'm glad you're feeling better. Good. Well, thank you. I am feeling better. My wife... Uh, on the verge of pneumonia, by the way. She's homesick. Oh. We got some medications in her, so we're hoping that rest and a little medication over the weekend, she'll uh, start to bounce back. But she's uh, she's the one that's in need of our prayers right now. So I appreciate your concern, Frank, and I am feeling better. Thank you. Well, the reason, another reason I called is uh, I'm going to try to jog your memory. Uh, about a month and a half ago, uh, there was a lady that called in, and she said uh, something about uh, Obama was... was um, he was, he was speaking to Putin, Vladimir Putin, and uh, they, he was supposed to give away a part of Alaska. Do you remember that? Yes, I remember that call. Okay, and uh, and uh, there was another lady that called in and said, when you talk about the homosexuals, they cut down part of your program. Do you remember that? Uh-huh. Okay. You, you said you would check into that and follow up on that. But now, go back to the Putin thing. I really seriously believe that somebody should know about that Putin thing because I, no one's never mentioned it. You don't hear it on the news at all. Yeah. And well, you so, know, and, and I don't know all of what the answers are there. The best answer I have is that these islands aren't under anybody's sovereign control right now. Uh, they're not actually under the sovereign control of the United States, nor are they on the sovereign control of Russia. They're actually closer to the Russian mainland than the United yeah. States. So there may be some dispute. And typically what happens when you have islands like that, they're uninhabited and unclaimed. Whoever stakes a claim to them first and can defend that claim, then by international law, it's a theirs by right. So it may be a matter of whether Russia or the United States gets to those islands first and stakes claim to them. And I know another issue that's actually of more concern for the purposes of stability is that J- uh, Japan and China right now they're locked, excuse me, they're locked up in a conflict over some uninhabited islands that lie off of their coastlands, and uh, they're, they're getting pretty serious. I mean, it's like uh, England and Argentina over the Falkland Islands. It's got that level of tension to it, and of course, there may be some resources involved. They may be oil-rich islands. I'm not exactly sure all the details there, but that's got a potential escalate into armed conflict between China and Japan. Boca Point AFR Talk will be right back. After these brief messages, 888 589 Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 